Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss a recent paper called Unified Transformer Based Framework for Duplex Text Normalization. This paper is coming from NVIDIA and the overview is as follows. First we will see the introduction of the paper, then we will see the methodology, then we will see the experiment and finally we will see some results. What is uh, text normalization and inverse text normalization? For example, um, imagine I give you a sentence. Um, I am, uh, let's say, going to market at uh, 10 p.m. For example, right? If I give you this sentence, text normalization should be able to convert this sentence into this 10 should be replaced by the word 10 and p.m. If I write, let's say I want $10, it has to be converted into 10 and dollars. So this is called text normalization. This is very important for uh, for text-to-speech engines. For example, let's say you have a, a TTS engine, uh, which you are uh, using uh, to generate audio. And your audio, uh, you, uh, your input to the TTS engine is always text. And it has to be in the words form. So this should be like, if you want to write, I want ten dollars. You should write it as I want ten and dollars in words. And similarly, inverse normalization or inverse text normalization is as follows. Imagine you have a sentence: um, I want five dollars. Or sorry, I want five dollars. So all the words. Uh, all all the entire text is in word form there is no number or there is no um, um, like for example in case of uh, in case of timing there is no pm or uh, something like that so all the words all the entire text will be in word form when does this happen uh, for example imagine you are you have a speech recognition system or speech to text system the job of speech to text system is to take an audio signal audio and uh, generate transcript Usually, uh, if you build any speech recognition system, the output of speech to text will be always words. And uh, sometimes it is characters, we are going to eventually convert into words using language model, even if it's a word, we are going to get words as the output. And the output will be all words, there will be no numbers, there will be no comma, full stop or dull symbol or anything like that. But um, most of the companies or uh, uh, of, uh, most of the most of the speech uh, wh whoever uh, um, publishes their API or uh, companies who wants to uh, open source their APIs uh, for public they want to uh, give a transcript which is in readable form uh, I mean the output here is also readable but if you if you can write it as for example the I want five dollar if you want if you can write it as I uh, want five dollar this is uh, more readable and this is uh, more convenient for the user uh, end user so all, all we have to do is whatever we did in the text normalization we have to do it in the reverse way right so we are get, going to get the output as i want five dollars like this here but i want to convert that as i want five dollar symbol and five should be a digit instead of words right so this is called inverse text normalization and many companies who are uh, building the APIs for uh, public, they they uh, they have to uh, they they want to uh, uh, use this post processing technique uh, to make the output more readable. Like for example, if you use Google, if you use Amazon or AWS, or, so they all give you output in this form, right? So this is called inverse text normalization. Now, uh, like I said, many companies uh, who are who are uh, building APIs for speech recognition, they want to use this, you build this post-processing engine. And this is, uh, you can think of this as some sort of a model, right? So speech recognition is a, uh, a speech recognition is an algorithm and it uses some sort of neural network. Similarly, we have to use some sort of a, a model to uh, do this task, right? And how people have done previously, I mean, what people have done previously to solve this task is, uh, people have proposed rule-based approaches and there are uh, finite uh, weighted finite state uh, transducer approaches and um, and recently neural networks also have been used to uh, uh, do this task right 
so this is a, a very well known um, very well known problem but not much of the work is done in this space as a matter of fact i mean you will find very i mean uh, you you won't hear much about like if you, if you are following uh, speech recognition conferences uh, number of papers coming into this um, this area that like very very uh, very very small so so but i think this is very much needed uh, many companies wants to do this in fact uh, we uh, which are the companies which have worked pro in the past they all uh, want to do this so uh, so like i mentioned we have two problems here right so we have text normalization which is uh, converting uh, a sentence which has numbers and so on to uh, uh, actual uh, uh, words sequence of words and the other way around so it's called inverse text normalization and uh, like i said uh, there are algorithms to build uh, algorithms to solve text normalization there are algorithms to solve inverse text normalization the question this paper is asking is can we do uh, both of them using I mean, can we solve both the problems using single model right so as you can see here this is a good example some some people so i mean you have let's say 72 people were found as a sentence and uh, in uh, uh, text normalization writes it as this uh, other way around inverse text normalization should it should write it as this right so can we solve these two problems using a single model so that's why the model name has uh, duplex uh, in it and um, so uh, so we're going to see how a neural network uh, can be used uh, or a unified framework can be built using neural network uh, to solve this uh, duplex uh, problem or to solve both TN and uh, ITN problem and they show that uh, combining uh, some sort of data augmentation method which we'll see in the coming slide uh, this model obtains state-of-the-art performance on google uh, text normalization data set for english and russian and they also reach about 95 percent of sentence level accuracy on the internal english um, text normalization data set uh, without any additional fine tuning so we'll see all the results and everything in the coming slide and then we'll slowly understand the paper uh, in detail coming to the methods um, uh, the method is divided into two parts so one is the stage one is called tagging and the stage two is called normalizing so stage one looks like this so imagine you have some sort of a transformer based uh, uh, transformer model which takes a sequence of uh, words like this which is uh, a normalized sentence you want to uh, normalize it uh, so that your output will be like set a uh, reminder reminder at 5 pm please right so this is the output we want this is again uh, edge normalization problem so first what we are going to do is we are going to run a uh, tagger uh, the tagger is again a uh, transformer based tag a tagger um, so what that does is it takes every token uh, you, here we are showing it as words but uh, usually in case of transformer it is kind of a word but imagine you have sequence of words and you tokenize them and uh, each for each token you are going to predict whether you want to use or whether you want to uh, 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 normalize that particular piece of text or not in that particular utterance and since we are solving this solving both the problems together we need to indicate to the model whether you want to solve TN problem, which is text normalization problem or ITN problem. So that is given as an external input or extra input along with the sentence uh, to the model, right? So the model will know what task to solve uh, based on the input you are getting. So it's like uh, guiding the mo guiding the model. It's a simple, it's the same model, but you are telling the model, uh, uh, telling the model beforehand what uh, task you want to solve uh, and so on, right? So that's why you have two indicators here and uh, this is the classic way of uh, like uh, uh, providing input like in the case of like many, many other, there are many uh, other uh, cases you can think of uh, where you want to use this kind of thing uh, in this case the input for the initial input itself will be a tn or itn uh, a tag and uh, followed with the sentence and the model will predict um, uh, s is basically uh, you can think of it as some null uh, output and uh, the <coughs> the other uh, wherever you want to predict the tag um, or wherever you, wherever you think you want to normalize um, you can predict you, you have to predict uh, eight different uh, eight different set of uh, classes which i will show you 
and uh, once you have this semiotic segment then uh, you can use that to um, use that to uh, predict or use that to normalize um, normalize the sentence so so in this uh, in this uh, example we have 5 pm and this is one segment which you want to normalize right now this is the tagging part let's say you tag you say okay from what time to what uh, at which words or which segment of the sentence you want to normalize then you take that particular segment with some sort of left context and right context uh, this is the very important thing so you, you could simply feed uh, the segment right so if you feed this particular segment and ask the uh, normalizer to predict the sequence of words and uh, but providing this uh, context now is going to help you a lot which we'll show in, which we will see in the result section and the normalizer is basically some sort of a sequence to sequence model so the it's a sequence to sequence model which has a transformer encoder and a transformer decoder and it, its input is the segment which you want to normalize along with left right left context and right context and you also have to put uh, you also have to f also have to feed the text normalize uh, also have to feed the tag or, or the input uh, to the model such a way that it, uh, so that the model knows what task it wants to solve right so in this case we want to solve text normalization problem so we are going to feed the tn tag and ask the model to generate words uh, for this uh, phi and pm uh, uh, words right so the output as you can see it's normalized and uh, this is a transform based encoder and decoder right so this is how the model works so imagine the, mo the model is very simple you have a, a two model one is the tagger one is the normalizer tagger tags or tagger predicts at which uh, parts of the segment you which part of the sentence you want to uh, normalize and the tagger will just uh, the normalizer will just take those segments and normalizes them right and you can train the model into it if you have the label data right okay uh, whatever i explained to you in the previous slide um, just putting in the words here so as i said imagine you have input sentence t0, t1 t2 tn n is the number of tokens and t0 will be your um, uh, will be will be your uh, label um, uh, tn or itn because we want to tell the model in the first step itself like what the problem you want to solve and then um, the role of the tagger is to predict sequence of labels so y0 uh, y1 y2 yn where i where i where y i is the label corresponding to the token ti and it's just a it's just a softmax classifier on top of the transformer so xi here is the transformer feature encoder uh, for example if you are using uh, um word base um uncased uh, you will be having 756 dimensional feature vector that you multiply with some some uh, feature matrix which which will which is uh, which take which, uh, which is of a matrix size this uh, with some bias and do some apply uh, softmax and you are predicting eight characters right? eight uh, uh, classes right and that is the output and you do the same thing for all the time steps coming to the transformer based uh, normalizer again um, you have uh, like say for example if you have a sentence and uh, if there are m number of uh, uh, m semiotic uh, spans means uh, let's say if I write uh, I want ten dollars and I will go to shop at 5 p.m. or something like that right so in this sentence you have uh, two semiotes so basically you have two segments where you want to pre-normalize so in assume you have m of them uh, for just mathematical uh, notation say and uh, m number of symmetric spans and the role of normalization is to take each of them and then uh, generate a particular uh, uh, generate sequence of words for each of them right uh, so that that's the job of uh, transformer normalizer and again as i said the architecture is simple you have encoder which is a transformer you have decoder and you train the model uh, again uh, this is an example of how data augmentation is done uh, during training so imagine the output of a uh, tagger is like this a transformer tagger and the tagger will tell you okay this part you want to predict the, or this part you want to um, generate the or you, this part you want to normalize so you can simply feed this as the input right and the model is to predict like this or you can also take left context and right context like this at and 4 pm today 
Yeah, uh, or uh, at and 4 p.m. Uh, today, uh, me and me also. So like that, you can create lot of uh, segments or pieces um, and add them to the training uh, data so that your your, your uh, performance will improve. This is some some sort of a data augmentation trick, right? And uh, uh, that is about the data augmentation and uh, the training is very simple, like I mentioned. And uh, since they are using multiple languages here, or since they are building models for multiple languages, for English they are using Distilled Robota base and uh, Normalizer ST5 base. So the ST5 base is actually a sort of a encoder and decoder framework, which you can use it for, like for example, machine translation and any other spelling correction tasks and so on. And Rush for Russian Tagger, I mean Russian language, uh, they are using this co-integrated Robota Tiny uh, uh, from Hugging Face. These are all lugging face uh, models. You can simply uh, just call from pre-trained from lugging face and you can download them and use them as it is, right? For German, so right. And coming to the experiments, uh, uh, like I said, uh, for English and Russian, they are using Google's uh, uh, text normalization dataset for training. And for uh, German, they have created a clean dataset from spoken Wikipedia corpus. And um, as I said, the, all the models are downloaded from Hugging Face library, and uh, and uh, these are the this this is what I just mentioned in the previous like the models and for which language which models are used or which models are downloaded from Hugging Face and used. Okay, finally uh, coming to the result section, um, this is very interesting. Uh, I think um, you have three languages here: Russian, English, uh, English, Russian, and German. Uh, look carefully. Uh, uh, about uh, look, uh, 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 yeah, so uh, so look at the base baseline models first. Let's look at the baseline models first. Then we'll go back to the results of this particular model. The baseline first baseline you should look at is this model, this Nemo's WFST. Um, WFST. So basically, this is a WFST based uh, inverse text normalizer or non uh, text normalizer. Uh, which is uh, which is actually pre with this this is actually present in Nemo uh, library. Nemo is open source uh, toolkit uh, for speech recognition and uh, natural language processing, uh, which is uh, I think it's, it's it's from Nvidia and they have uh, text normalizer as of now. Uh, you can see it's based on WFST, and for uh, English it gives you inverse text normalization gives you seventy five percent, which is very bad. Uh, and for Russian it's given was just fifty percent, and German is it's also very much so very very bad, right? Now, uh, if you just add a transformer um, based model, uh, you are already uh, there is no results here for this uh, inverse text normalization, but for text normalization they are already working really well, right? And adding this duplex and simplex, uh, simplex is basically one way means. You only have the, you, you only use the model for text normalization or inverse text normalization. Duplex means combined, and uh, that also that's already giving you a uh, one percent improvement, right? And if you add data augmentation, it's it's a little bit more increment. What you want to see is uh, this is the surprising result. Uh, you are going from uh, uh, most WFST with the baseline model WFST to going going from WFST to a transformer or duplex based systems. The, the improvement is quite big, right? And same thing happens even in Russian and uh, uh, German languages as well. So this is a very interesting result. Uh, and uh, uh, so, and similarly, you can, you can look at the results for uh, text normalization also. But I am more most uh, uh, inverse text normalization is a bit difficult to solve problem compared to text normalization. I think uh, because inverse text normalization uh, you can I mean there are multiple ways of mapping a particular sentence into the uh, word so. So that that's that's the thing. So so anyway, uh, as you can see, it's duplex based system outperforms all the baseline models. As you can see, also it uh, it also shows that uh, you, you, if you combine the two tasks together, um, you are already getting improvement. Except for the Russian, where you have uh, where simplex model is working better than the duplex one. But most of the cases, uh, duplex systems works a little better than simplex based simplex systems. Simplex means one one system means it's, it's used only for one task as duplex is used for both the task and uh, uh, this is the results of uh, both duplex and simplex with and without data augmentation as you can see for duplex if you add data augmentation you are getting like almost two percent improvement uh, for simplex also you are getting about one percent improvement 
and that's all for this uh, tutorial thank you so much for watching this tutorial uh, um, if you like this kind of uh, tutorials please subscribe to my channel and click the notification button and if you like this tutorial please give a thumbs up thank you